How's it going everyone? In this tutorial, we're gonna be building a stopwatch timer using React. This stopwatch timer is gonna be similar to a timer you've seen on a cell phone. We're gonna be able to start it, we're gonna be able to stop it, we're able to resume, and we'll be able to reset it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is set up a new React application. So head over to your terminal. I'm gonna use create react app to get this started. So type in the command mpx create react app followed by the name of your project. And this can take a few minutes. Great, now once your project is set up, go ahead and navigate into that folder with the cd command. And I'm gonna open it uh, in Visual Studio Code with the command code dot. Just make sure that you've navigated to your project in your code editor. And we're gonna be working in the app.js file for this, um, for this project. I'm also gonna give the um, command npm start. I'm gonna enter the command just so that we can start seeing what's going on in the browser. And in this timers demo, we are going to be using the use state hook to keep track of the time, as well as whether the timer is on or off. We're gonna be keeping track of whether it's on or off to set up an interval in JavaScript using the set interval command. And once this development server is up, we can go ahead and get started. One thing I'm gonna do just right away is I'm gonna clear out this header out of the default React create React app code. We really only need a div to get working in in this app.js file. So we've got our boilerplate code up here. And let's go ahead and get started. So the um, one import that we're gonna wanna add as well, if you don't already have it, at the top we should import React from React. This will give us access to the use state and use effect hook, which we're gonna use in our timer. So I'm gonna go ahead and create these hooks now. If you haven't used the use state hook before, we're just gonna go ahead and set one up and I'll explain how it works. The first thing we're gonna keep track of, we'll add a const variable with an array and we'll have the time as well as a set time function. And we'll set this equal to use state and we'll pass in zero. So how this works is we've got a variable here that will keep track of the number of milliseconds our timer's been on. And we've got a setter function that we'll, we can use to, um, to set this time. We're actually gonna wanna use react.useState. useState is a method on the React library. And this number zero is just the default variable, the default value for the time variable. And like I said, we're also gonna wanna keep track of whether or not the timer's on. So let's make another hook now called timer on, and that will get a set timer on function as well. And we can use react.useState, and we'll just set it to false because that's usually the default value. And now we've got our two variables with their default values. And let's go ahead and in our markup as well, let's just add a div with the time in it for now. It should just show a zero, but It'll be good to have that handy. And let's see, if we go ahead and save, we should see a zero here now. Great, so we've got the zero. It means the time variable is displaying properly. And next, we can go ahead and create the buttons for our timer as well. Like I mentioned, this is just gonna be like a standard phone timer. So we're gonna wanna have four buttons on it. And so let's go ahead and create them now. The first button that we're gonna want is a start button. And this button is going to take an on click method. So in this on click handler, we are going to pass in an arrow function. And this is simply going to set timer on to be true. By default, it's false. And if we hit start, this should start our timer. And we're also gonna have a stop uh, stop button as well. I'm just gonna copy and paste the start button because the stop button code is gonna be pretty similar. We'll just change the text to stop and we'll change set timer on to be false. And this timer on is just a Boolean of whether or not the timer's on. 
And the next button that we're going to use is resume, which is also similar to the start button. So we can go ahead and paste this now. And it's just going to have resume text. But um, it actually is the exact same thing as the start button. And we can differentiate a little bit from them later, but the, the functionality is going to be the same. And lastly, let's go ahead and add a button for reset. And reset will be slightly different, but it's going to take an on click handler as well. It'll take an arrow function as well. And this is going to set the time to be zero. So pretty straightforward. We've just used some of our hook functions and we've set, um, set their values here. And so um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is jump into the use effect hook. And so let's go ahead and write one now and I can explain what it is if you haven't used it before, but we are going to um, use the use effect hook. It takes in an arrow function as well as an array. And how this works is this function will run as soon as the, um, as soon as the component is rendered. And since we actually want this use effect hook to run anytime this timer on value changes, we're going to go ahead and pass this, timer on um, state variable into this array. And so now this use effect hook will run every time this timer on variable changes. So here we're going to um, include all of our logic for what happens when the timer turns on and when the timer turns off. And we're going to be using an interval, like I said, and to keep track of it, we're going to use let interval, we're going to create a variable, and we're going to start it out as null. Um, the reason for this is because this is going to be the same hook for whether we turn it on or off. And so we need to have access to this interval. It should make sense in a little bit, but um, for now we just need to have it declared. And we're going to be using an if conditional. And this if conditional is simply going to be whether or not the timer's on. And we'll also have an else. And so since this is a Boolean, this first block of code is going to be the code that happens when we turn the timer on. And the second block of code will be the code that happens when we turn the timer off. And so when we turn the timer on, we actually want to initialize this interval. So we can say this let our interval variable equal be equal to a set interval. And set interval is a JavaScript method takes in an arrow function, as well as a number of milliseconds. And so I'm going to choose 10 here. 10 is, um, since we're going to be keeping track of hundreds of a second, that's what 10 is. A thousand would be one second, and 10 is a hundredth of a second. So that's how often we want to run our interval. And we simply want to increase the time every 10 milliseconds. So we can use our set time function that we declared above. And we'll take in the previous time. And this is just an arbitrary variable that um, points to what the time value was before. And we will say, give us our previous time plus 10. So every 10 milliseconds, we'll increase the time by 10, by 10 or 10 milliseconds, since we're keeping track of milliseconds in our time variable. And in our else conditional, when we turn the timer off, we want to clear this interval. So we can also use the JavaScript method clear interval, which takes in an interval that has been set. And since we set this interval to interval before, we can pass this in here. And this, this should stop our timer. And lastly, to get the timer working, the use effect hook uh, works best if you return a cleanup function. And this isn't actually super necessary, but it's good to avoid memory leaks when the component gets unmounted. It'll just make sure to stop the interval when the user leaves the page. So we can return an arrow function and that arrow function will do the same thing. It will clear the, clear the interval that we set above. And so we've got our functionality here. We should have a working stopwatch timer. I'm going to make this a little bigger. And if we go ahead and start, we'll see that our timer is working. The time is increasing. If we stop, stop properly, if we resume, it uh, resumes again. And if we hit reset, it goes back to zero. So great, we've got a fully functional timer here. 
not a complete project yet. We still have to format this code and we still have to make sure not all these buttons are showing all the time. So let's jump back into our JSX here. And I'm gonna delete this time now just because we're gonna to wanna to be keeping track of minutes, seconds, and hundreds of a second. So we are going to be using multiple spans to do this. And I'm gonna start out with just one span and we can first look at the, um, let's just look at the uh, hundreds of a second first because that uh, will be the easiest to debug. And so how we're gonna wanna do this, we're gonna need the time for sure. So let's bring our time back in. And since a hundredth of a second is like we mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier is 10 milliseconds. We're gonna be dividing by 10 to see how many hundredths of a second are. We're gonna to wanna to wrap this in parentheses because we actually want this number to um, only show the modular 100. And the reasoning for this is because once the number goes up to 100, we want it to go back down to zero. So we want it to go 99 and then back to zero. So this will get that, that job done. And also, um, if we were to display this now, I believe, let's see. So this, this number is working good. Um, so that, that is good. Um, and we'll have, we'll have that there. The one thing that we got to keep in mind as well is if we um, if we start this, you'll know you might notice there's a little blip when the number is between one and nine. It's only showing one digit instead of two, but we want it to be zero followed by whatever digit that is. And so one way we can get that done is um, we can we'll wrap this in another parentheses. And we will add a zero to the beginning. And let's see, so this solves the problem when we're at one digit, but not when we're at two, we still have this, this leading zero here. So keep going, keep adding parentheses. Um, not all these might be necessary, but I think it's, I think it'll, um, it'll definitely get the job done. And the last thing that we can do is at the end, we can slice a minus two off. And how this this works is if you pass a negative number into slice, it will cut away every number of variable. If we have more than th uh, two numbers here, it will make it into two. So now you see we've always got two digits. This little trick here works well. We can concatenate it to zero into the onto the front of the number. This made this this a string here, and then we sliced. Uh, slice that number to be only two digits. So we've got we've got our number here for hundreds of a second. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this again a few times since the syntax will be somewhat similar for seconds as well as minutes. And so for seconds, instead of 10 for um, millis for hundreds of a second, we're going to do a thousand because a thousand is one second. Um, and we're also going to want to change this. 100 to 60 because there's 60 seconds in a minute rather than 100 hundredths of a second in a second. And also for minutes, we're going to want to make this number 60,000 because there's 60 seconds in a minute and a thousand milliseconds in a second. So that's 60,000 milliseconds makes up a minute. And again, we'll want to make this a 60 just because um, there's 60 seconds in a minute. And so this should get us um, most of the way there. Let's see, we'll give it a refresh. That is, we got something going on. Um, so I think our issue here is that uh, this number needs to be rounded down. So if we go ahead and give a math.floor in front of this number here should solve our problem there we go we what was happening was when we saw the numbers changing it was because those were actually the decimals added on after and it was 
adding a zero so it was about 10 digits long and then cut it down to the decimals but now we've got we've got it working here we've got it going good and I know this code might seem a little confusing but pick it apart take a look at it see what's going on this math.floor is necessary for the seconds and minutes and we don't actually need it for um, the hundreds of a second I'm also going to add some colons here just to separate these make it a little more legible so we've got our start stop resume and reset are working just as well and reset it again and lastly before we're done I think um, we've got four buttons here all the time not ideal so let's do a little conditional rendering now for each of these buttons just to um, not show them at all times so first thing that we can say is um, we only want to show the start button if the timer is not on and so I'm going to say um, n n not timer on which means if timer on is false and this and and will render everything inside these parentheses so we can drop this down to the next line and include the button inside these parentheses and so this should if we refresh um, the start button is still showing up just like we want it to and let's do the opposite for the stop button so we'll say timer on and we'll give it an and and followed by some parentheses and for this um, to drop this line down I just held alt and pressed down and up that's how you can move this around and so this should get rid of our stop button since the timers off alright and now the resume button we don't need the resume button unless the timers off so we'll say timer on we'll add the and and in the parentheses I'll clean this up a little bit then we'll bring the button up into the parentheses here and the reset button we only want the reset button to show up as well if the timer is not on we don't really need to reset it when the timer's running so we'll add our parentheses again include the button and now we've got the timer whether or not the timer is on logic showing up and um, that gets us I'd say most of the way there but there are some more conditions that we want to include the start button and the resume button are the same but we don't want to show the start button if the time is not zero um, so we'll go ahead and add another condition and we'll say time equals equals zero and then another and so this is going to make sure that both of these conditions are true to show this and so if the time is zero we'll show the button if it's not zero it will be hidden and for um, for the stop button it doesn't really matter what the time is if the timer's on we want to show the stop button so that's that's good there and for our resume button this is going to be again opposite of the start button since we never want to show them at the same time so we can say time is not sorry not equal equal to zero and we'll add the, another double and and lastly the reset button um, we don't want to be able to reset it if the time is zero so we'll just say if the time is greater than zero and add another double and so now we should have all the buttons working properly so the, only the start button to start only the stop button when it's on and now we have the resume and reset so we can resume we can stop again we can reset alright so we've got a fully functional timer um, I'm actually not going to go ahead and style this in the video I'm going to include a link in the video description to all the code here as well as a styled timer so if you want to um, if you want to find if you want to reference that later or if you want to style up the code with the styles I had earlier go ahead and look in the description for those styles or feel free to style it yourself I hope you found this video um, interesting or useful I definitely thought that um, learning this early on when I in my coding career was a great way to learn react and also just a, a good um, a good kind of engineering practice if you will I've used this in a couple apps since then or something similar so yeah I hope you found the video useful if you if you liked it go ahead and give it a thumbs up 
if you want to see more videos like this too, please subscribe to the channel. We've got, got more videos coming and thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.